So they're going to need a big game for Miles Kelly. And we know Miles Kelly is capable of that. He's their leading scorer. He does it in bunches for those guys. Been a little streaky at times. Need to get him going early to get all important home win here for the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. We are ready to go. Matt Potter's got the ball in hand. Federico Federico wins the tap against Rodney Howard. <laughs> and away we go, Mr. Childress. Let's have a good game here. Start of the triple header. Here on ACC Network, Pitt, you see the record, bottom left of your screen, four and two in conference. Off those back-to-back -back losses, they had an 11-point halftime lead on Duke, and they battled in that one-point loss last weekend against Clemson. Three doesn't go for Greg Elliott, the Marquette transfer. And here comes Georgia Tech. They get Jalen Moore back, the sophomore at six foot seven, 14 in white, didn't play on Tuesday in that overtime loss to Notre Dame with a thigh contusion, but he's back in there for Josh Pastner. And here he is going to work on Blake Hinson. Drops it back out for Kelly, who's matched up with Burton. Kelly off the bounce, forced into a tough shot, and able to run down his own miss in a fresh 20. Line drive triple goes for Moore, and welcome back, Jalen Moore. Well, check out the pit starting lineup. As usual, it is a group of men for Jeff Cable. <laughs> Just be kind saying their experience as Georgia Tech comes out in there. Start out the first possession in the 1-3-1. Now they're falling back into the traditional 2-3 zone, which is really tough to deal with. There's Nelly Cummings. Backs it out to Elliott. Shot clock winding down. Elliott slashing. Left it short. Rebound cleared by Georgia Tech and Debo Coleman. Coleman pulls up. He's trying to get back on track from three. He and Miles Kelly were cold yeah. in South Bend. Both of those guys are streaky right now. They're not in the best grooves, but again, just got to shoot it, stay confident. Eventually, they'll go in, just take and make good shots. Henson, he's been an explosive <laughs> scorer as well. The fifth year senior, yeah. 16 and 7 a game. He's been the, I won't even call him the Robin to Batman. He's just been equally as effective. There's only a tenth of a point between he and Burton. So both of those guys are just scoring at a high level. So you're going 1A, 1B with that? Yeah, I'm going to go 1A, 1B. I won't even call him Robin. He's been that good all year long. We'll get your all ACC first team choices later on here during the game. Off the turnover from Kelly. Hints it ahead of the pack. And he gets blocked by Jalen Moore. And a turnover off of a great play. I hope both of the guys are okay. Just great chase down block there. Timed it more, goes up. All ball. Hit the ground pretty hard. I hope he's okay. Both guys are up running around. A little grimace from Jalen Moore, who again didn't play Tuesday. Yeah. Josh Pastner said he was cleared, but that thigh contusion that Josh told us this morning, Jalen suffered in the second half of the Florida State game in Tallahassee last Saturday. This time of year, there's always nicks and bruises and flu viruses and colds and everything going around clubs this time of year, so. Guys are out here just toughening it up. No doubt. Here's Coleman on the drive. Down the lane, met by Federico. And Pitt runs again. It's Burton. Add Cummings with him. Burton through the contact, draws a foul. And Jamarius Burton will go to the line. Well, there's Josh Pastner. Boy, he was still lamenting that close <laughs> loss yeah. in overtime. And uh, you mentioned sickness. There's Davon Smith. He did go through shoot around today. Javon Franklin and him, they've both been sick the last couple of days, but again, they did go through a shoot around. We do expect to see them today. I think they'll get out on the floor at some point. We don't know when, but I really think they're going to miss Javon Franklin because his ability in that mid post, he's an excellent passer, and he shoots that mid range shots probably a little bit better than Howard. Howard gives him a bigger body, more physicality, but as far as initiating the offense and passing, I think they'll need to get Javon Franklin back out there tonight. And a small ball guy for Josh Pastner. They're just so small when he's on the floor. They don't have a lot of rim protection. So when Franklin Howard's out, when Rodney Howard's out there, he gives him just a little bit more size and rim protection. And you're going to need that against this dynamic guards that Pittsburgh have. They got four guards that are coming at you at all times. Including Burton, who's an excellent free throw shooter, and he makes both, averaging 16, 5, and 4 assists a game for the fifth year senior. Well, he's just been incredible. Just under 21 a game in ACC play. Just. Nearly nine points more in ACC from a year ago. Uh, Mikey Sabandi pressuring up on Debo Coleman at half court, and Georgia Tech starts the offense midway through the shot clock. With Mikey Sabandi, he's not a guy you want to play with the ball in front of him. You got to put him on your hip, just beat him and go. 
sure Debo is not accustomed to guys pressuring me, used to using his size, but like his man, he's such, so athletic, so strong, so physically gifted. Excellent three point shooter, but he's a really good on ball defender. Fouls on Nelly Cummings. Kelly off the screen from Howard. Moore thought about the high low with Howard. And now Lance Terry. The Gardner Webb transfer shut off by Cummings, probing for space. Federico got a piece of that, and then Howard ripped it away. Kelly has to hoist. Back iron. Battle on the boards, and we get a foul on the rebounding action. Where this Pitt Panther team is vulnerable, it's on the glass. I mean, they're plus four in the season, but in ACC play, they're minus four. So it'll be interesting to see the first three that Georgia Tech received was off an offensive rebound. So they know they can crash the glass and hurt this Pitt Panther team. They're going to need with that smaller lineup to make sure these guards come back in there and help Federico, Federico rebound. Fun to say. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it was a plus 23 rebounding margin for Duke in that win against Pitt on Wednesday, an eight-point victory for the Blue Devils at Cameron. Quick trigger at the other end, and that's Debo Coleman, and that's more what you expect from him. <laughs> well, Debo Coleman was in late last night getting up extra shots and then playing off. He's catching it in rhythm, taking shots. True or false, you know that because you left your backpack here. I did, and he let me back in the building, so <laughs> that's the great thing. I walked up with his car waving my hands like, can somebody, you know anybody? And it was Debo, and I was like, oh, thank God, it's Debo. Debo, can you let me back in the building? So I'm cheering for Debo tonight to shoot the ball well because he let me back in the building to get my backpack. Well, Blake Hinson shooting it well also. He's got two threes, <laughs> pit by two just over four minutes in. Federico's doing a really good job of forcing Franklin to catch that ball. He wants to catch a lower than he does to get a turnover here. Burton the takeaway. Had it roll off the rim. And then a foul committed by Pitt after Burton missed the money. Got a three-point shooting contest here early. Debo bangs down his three, and Hinton comes back and says, anything you can do, I can do better. Got a good ball game here in midtown. Running a food pantry can be a Absolutely. I mean, we all know John Hughley's a heck of a player, but he's also a heck of a young man. We've had a chance to cover many games and talk to him quite a bit a year ago as he's kind of burst on the scene. So let's hope he gets all the support and help that he needs. Pitt said that Hughley will seek a redshirt year, and Jeff Capel said we're here to support John as he continues to learn to manage challenges in his personal life and added he should be applauded for, for be. seeking out that help to continue to grow as a young man. He should be, and hopefully this encourages other young men and women to come out and seek help themselves when they feel they need it. Got another possession here, another, you know, the second second option again, a second chance to get to keep attacking the offensive glass here. This Pitt team is really small. They've made a couple of threes so far. They do have Davon Smith into the game off the bench, the junior who was so good in that game against Notre Dame with his first career double-double. Terry Smith into the lane, bounces for Smith, who connects. Great sign for Georgia Tech early if they can start knocking down shots. They're not a great shooting team outside of Kelly. Kelly's their best three-point shooter. Everyone else is streaky, so if they can come out tonight and knock down shots again, this team is a lot better in the ACC than their 1-5 record. Josh Pastner said to his pregame, it's got to be Coleman and Terry making threes. It's, it's a good sign that they only have one from those two guys so far. Now, the other guys are knocking down shots. They like their chances against anybody because they know they're going to compete on the defensive end. Off the Blake Hinson miss. Here is Smith snaking and turning it over. Trying to kick to the corner for Miles Kelly. Yeah. I don't even know if Franklin could have been in the corner at 6'10 and caught that one. <laughs> that came in with some heat on it. Glad that he's feeling better, though. Yeah, high fastball upstairs yeah, from Spencer that's a Strider. High, there's a chin checker right there. Yep. Some heat on that one. So pit down one just about six minutes in. Passner and Georgia Tech Yellow Jacks do a great job of changing defenses, and they switch things up, keep you off balance from man to 1-3-1 one, one, and 2-3 zone. Henson short, offensive rebound, Federico. Henson didn't get Howard to bite, misses that one, and Blake Henson has already thrown up six shots. Coleman drives, left hand, had it roll off against Federico. It's just so long. Difficult to make shots over top of Federico. A lot of contact there from Kelly, draped around Burton, and it belongs to Georgia Tech. Pitt's a very physical team, and Georgia Tech's going to answer the call. So expect teams to have to dig in their bench tonight. Go maybe a little deeper than they're accustomed to. 
Both teams play with a level of physicality, and, and honestly, both teams need this game. Henson out, you saw Nate Santos come in. Yeah, Georgia Tech, they've got that one ACC win. That's against Miami here a week and a half ago. They felt like they gave one away. Josh Pass told did. us today, we blew it they against did. Notre Dame. You can't lose games. You can be beaten, but you can't lose games, and they feel as though they've lost that game, and that's a tough feeling, tough pill, pill to swallow. Kelly zipped that pass. Now Smith can't hit his second. Santos clears it. And when you beat a good team like Miami, you just feel like you know you how good you can be. Burton with a good take against Howard. He's just so physical getting to the end of the lane. Really difficult to keep him out the paint. Kelly gives it up for Debo Coleman. Coleman gets to the mid post. Coleman threw some contact, gets the roll. It's a great finish with the left hand there by Debo. See that late game work is paying off, man. He's coming in ready, knocking down threes, shooting, finishing with the left. <laughs> Even today at shooter out, he was getting up a lot of shots. He you was. tried to chat with him. I said, man, this yeah, guy he was is dialed locked in. in. Yeah, he was dialed in. He was a little chattier yesterday. Today was game day, and you know you want to see him play well when the guy's putting that kind of extra work. You want to see him rewarded, and so far Debo. Debo's been rewarded with his efforts early here in the game. Sabandi knocks it down. Big time three for Nike Sabandi to start his scoring. Boy, he has changed games on both ends of the floor. That's what Jason Capel told us pregame. Well, he's healthy now. It takes a little time. He's had an ACL surgery, missed last season, hurt his knee early, and you know, you get over a year, year and a half away from it, you just feel that more, that much more comfortable when we see Nike doing as well. Fouls on uh, Nate Santos away from the ball, sends us to a timeout as Nike Sabandi drills one from deep for Pitt on the road against Georgia Tech. There's always a fresh deal on the Subway app, like this one. This thing with his Georgia Tech backcourt has just been consistency. That's what you're looking for out of the group. Both Smith and Kyle Sturdivant are into the game. Sturdivant keys it into Kelly. Sturdivant had 18 points, and he did all of that scoring after halftime for the Jackets in their bid against the Fighting Irish. Shot clock's at 10. Jalen Moore with it at the elbow on a handoff for Smith. Backs up on Diaz Graham and knocks down another jump shot. Great step back move there. Just patience, getting to his spot, stayed in rhythm. Santos, Sabandi, and Guillermo Diaz Graham. Three subs in right now for Pitt off the bench, along with Elliott and Burton. Georgia Tech disguising the defense is early. They were in zone. Now they're switching with man to man and they're switching everything and it's throwing Pitt off. It just has a rebound yeah. for Diaz Graham. Elliott spinning on Sturdivant for a tough two. They just keep coming at you in waves. <laughs> It's not Elliott, it's Cummings. If it's not Cummings, it's, you know, some, some bindy. It's always one of these dynamic guards. It's just nonstop with these guys. And yeah, you love their backcourt. Oh, just, I love the depth of it. We have so many quality guys. Reverse not there for Kelly. Tipped around, it does stay with Georgia Tech. Just a great move there. Drives and spins off away from contact. No one at the rim. I expect him to do that more. There's no shot blockers on the Georgia Tech team. Attack the rim, get it on the glass. The issue they're having on this end is they're not finishing possession rebounding, so you get punished with the penetration of smaller guards, but you can hurt them rebounding on this end of the floor here. Smith too strong. Yet yeah, Javon Franklin at six foot seven. He's into the game, by the way, for the first time coming out of that media timeout. He's their tallest guy with Howard on the bench. Burton just has a, a great again. job. Just so he's so physical. He, he he loves contact. So he's physically putting his body on guys, and he's so physically strong and gifted. He's drawing contact. You put your hands down. You just got to wall up and just don't reach. Get you caught, caught reaching in there, and he'll make a living at the free throw line if you do that. Told you he is a great free throw shooter. Guy who we know had 31 in that win over Carolina, and now for two separate opposing head coaches. Hubert Davis and Brad Brownell. Jamarius Burton has left both of them saying we couldn't guard him. We had no one on our team who could stay in front of Jamarius Burton. He's too physical for your average guard. And if you put you have to put size on him, not everybody has a 6'8, 6'9 guy. He's just, you know, 
anyone to tell you when you're guarding against guys that have size and physicality with the, the skill set that he has, it's just a difficult task and confidence in the system with Jeff. Capel puts him in and allows him the freedom in his offense. He's a handful. He's going to be counted on even more because Nelly Cummings has been on the bench with his two fouls here in this first half as Pitt leads by four midway through the first half. But the good thing about this group, again, as we said, they're not dependent upon one guy. Debo knocks down his second three-pointer in the corner. Four made threes for the Jackets. Just great penetration, very fine. Debo doing a great job getting his corner, getting his feet set. Elliott too strong off the back iron and a long rebound to Terry. Start of it. Step back on Hello. Burton. That is nice from Kyle Sturdivant. Sturdivant went in his bag on that one coming out early here. Getting the hometown crowd in the game. Hey now. Hey. You got to get your seatbelt on. Get ready for that one. And that's how he was down the stretch. We told you once he, he got into that game. Yeah, he has that in his game. And again, they can use quality scoring from the bench. And he's definitely capable of doing that. Shot clock below 10. Josh Pastner's fired up, barking at his defense. Sabandi goes off the bounce to the rim. Strong take on Franklin. Great job. What happens is you know he's a great three-point shooter, and he just freezes him at the three-point line, just gets downhill. They shoot the ball so well. Outside of Notre Dame, they shoot the ball so well, so you're hugging up in your man. Nobody there to protect him at the rim. Fouls on Guillermo Diaz-Graham. Hey, hey, just dancing here. Step back, clearing space. Just getting to a spot, I'm telling him, "Woo!" He knows that's nice. That might, he knows he's gonna have his friends talking about that one. He didn't get into the game until there were three seconds left in the first half against Notre Dame. He had been quiet the previous couple of games. Before that, he took a shot to the head, and then 11 in the second half and seven points in overtime. Terry can't hit. Franklin battles for it, but it's secured by Nelly Cummings into the game with two fouls. Let's see what Pitt does in their half-court execution right now. I think they're shooting the ball really quickly. Again? Yeah, I mean, they're just taking quick shots, and they're not set. The defensive transition is set. Great chase down block there by, by Nate, Nate Santos. Santos. How yeah. about that? How about it? Tracking back on Franklin. And then Elliott draws a foul on the drive. Going to get that, like get it out of here. Great clean block. We've seen some great defense, some athletic chase down blocks down by both teams. Santos is one of those guys coming in. If he wants to make an impact, it's not necessarily on the offensive end, it's on the defensive end, and he's showing you there. Yeah, Jeff Cable liked some of the minutes that he got from the sophomore Nate Santos out of Geneva, Illinois, at Duke on Wednesday. He had a couple of nice drives and got some opportunities for the Panthers. Elliott to the luck. Hey, every Thursday night, women's basketball takes over here on the ACC Network. Next week, it's Diamond Johnson and number 11 NC State hosting Miami at 6 Eastern. Then the rivalry matchup, number 16 Duke. Off to a great start to the season these first few months against number 22 North Carolina. Here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. Elliott has been lights out as a free throw shooter this season. Puts Pitt up by three as they extend some pressure. I think Jeff has realized that Georgia Tech's kind of disrupted their rhythm and changing their defense, and he wants to do a little bit of the same. And this team has struggled to shoot, so they banked some threes early here. Let's see if that, keep, that keeps going. Pretty good look for Sturdivant. Cummings pushes, and now Sabandi. He draws a foul on the baseline on Debo Coleman, so that's Coleman's second. Yeah, that's the thing. They just keep coming at you in waves. They can, they can knock down threes. You got to get up and close out. Then they start putting pressure on you off the dribble, and they're spacing, and it just creates trouble. You mentioned the challenge in going up against Georgia right. Tech. Jackets fans have heard this throughout yes. the seven-year tenure of, of Josh Pastner, but it's shape-shifting defense, and it's tough to ID what they're going to do. So well, Andy was wide open. Yeah, that was, a, that was a defensive mistake there. A lot of times what happens is as a player, you're thinking you got to identify because they, they, they're in a 1-3-1. Three, one. We attack that different. Then they run a 2-3 zone. We attack that different. Then they're in their man-to-man. -man. Then which set and how and who do we want to attack in that? And when they're constantly changing in every possession, it just makes it difficult. 
Sturdivant an another good look, and then Smith came up just short on a follow bid, springing off the deck. Dang. That's the Mike Monaco hops coming in there, uh -huh. Jonathan. Yes, please, spread that word. <laughs> <laughs> if only. He is bouncy, Davon Smith. Cummings off the jab step, can't hit over Howard, and look at Smith soar again to bring down a rebound to Howard. He's showing you his athletic ability. Start of it. Boy, he's had three good looks in a row, tipped out by Howard. Coleman loads and hits. That's the second three off the tip. Franklin Howard is just really being active. He didn't possess the ball, but he tipped it out. Another second chance point that ends up being the three for Georgia Tech, and I know they've knocked down twice so far in this game. They're going to need to punish this pit team. If they're vulnerable in any way, they're vulnerable on the backboard. So far, Georgia Tech's been hurting them and getting their hands on loose balls, winning the 50 50 goal. Elliott straight on no. At Georgia Tech plus five rebounding. They have six offensive rebounds already, and now Howard scores from the block, and the pit lead is down to one. Great job running the floor, get deep position, going to his lefty hook. They don't run a lot of plays for. Power, but again, they reward the big man for running the floor. Well, they played 13 minutes and scored just two points Tuesday in South Bend, Indiana. Sabandi, well short from deep, and you mentioned maybe some quick triggers yeah. from Pitt offensively. Yeah. Sabandi misses that one. Pitt started set up with some jump shots now. Just a great step up three by Debo. Again, one of many for the young man having him. Extra work pays off. Got a great game here in Midtown, fellas. Gatorade fit. Uh, on a year, that's a great sign for those guys moving forward. And again, I think this team is a lot better than their 1-5 record in conference play. Yeah, Coleman 0 for 6 from 3 Tuesday. His last six games coming into today, 6 for 28 from 3. Now, remember, he did hit 41%. Last year, yes, he did. Kelly, no. Federico, the rebound. He's had shared some responsibility as well. He's run a little bit more point guard for this team, initiated offense for him, and I think that's taken away from his ability to shoot and play off the ball some this year. Former top 50 recruit in the country. Trying to stick with Burton. Kicks it to Sabandi. Sabandi gives it up Elliott, and now Burton. Matched up with Sturdivant. He Jamari just overpowers those smaller guards. Yep. He's just so physical. You got to front him as a guard. When everything breaks down with this team, they're going to put a guard on him. You got to get a bigger body on him. If you put a regular guard, size guard, that's not 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and even at that size, they just got to be physically being able to match his physicality. Sturdivant out for Kelly, and he hits. That is a 6-3 for Georgia Tech. Great sign for Georgia Tech if Miles Kelly gets going. I mean, he is a 40% three point shooter. You don't want to make a mistake. Burton reached that time, left him open. Great job moving by Miles Kelly, finding an open spot, knocking down the three. First points for their top scorer who had missed his first five shots. Federico couldn't handle the Sabandi pass, and it's a pit turnover. This is a great job. You see Bert, JB Burton misses there on the swipe, and Kelly makes him pay. That's a Georgia Tech team that for the season, 33% yeah. from three. They've only made double-digit threes in a game one time this year. They're streaky, and today is one of those games. This is why road wins are so hard to, to come by. You know, this, this group is feeding off this crowd. Smith was shut off. Kelly helps him out. I think Smith got away with a travel there. I think he slid his pivot for a little bit. Kelly. Has it go off his foot into the arms of Sabandi, who pushes. Nike Sabandi in the open floor gets the roll. Nike Sabandi's got a chance at three. Gets the turn over here on the defensive end, turns defense and the offense. When you're not making shots, that's what you need to do. Create turnovers and score off those turnovers. Just coming down, gets to a strong hand. Takes the contact and finish. Great job on both ends of the floor there by Nike Savannah. I mean, he was the guy in that Carolina win. Jeff yeah. Campbell said that they really flipped the game for them. And he was really good against Virginia as well. And then Wednesday against Duke, Savandi had 11 as well. Well, he's already at his season average coming off the bench. I mean, he's, he's giving these guys 
you know, almost double-digit points coming off the bench. He's just under that, and he's already got that now in the first half with four minutes to go. So that's what I said. They come at you in waves. They got so many guys. They don't need all four. When all four is playing well, look out. Just, they, they're, you know, they just need a couple of guys to play. You got to hurt this team on the offensive glass. Smith turns the corner and lays it in. Seven for Davon Smith. I talked about it. I think it's this is a difficult team to guard when you're chasing them man to man with all their stuff. They, uh, Pastner just does a great job of running sets and drawing up plays to get his team a bucket. You got to come give help on this. Henson missed it. Rebound Smith. I thought he gave up a little prematurely there. He could have held it a little bit longer. You saw Henson coming down and just still a great look. Start of it. Back out to the corner for Tristan Maxwell, who gets involved with a seven jackets three. It's raining threes here in Atlanta. Now Tristan can shoot it. No, if he shoots it as well as his dad, Vernon Maxwell, but he shoots it pretty good. <laughs> that's a pretty high bar. Yeah, that's a that's a high standard. I'm gonna lean on dad to give it to dad for right now, but <laughs> Tristan definitely can shoot it. Sabandi is feeling it. Nike Sabandi's third three. Has him up to 14. The Nets are on fire here <laughs> right now. Both teams are shooting the ball from deep. We'll turn into who gets a stop right now. Howard gives it off to Davon Smith. Off the crossover. Sabandi stuck right with him and nearly forced the turnover. Start of it gives it up. Burton recovers. Smith. Can't hit off balance, and it's last touched by Elliott. They say off Howard, and it belongs to Pitt on the other side with the Panthers up one on the road here in Atlanta. Game, I mean, they, they're two games clear of everyone in this conference, so. And then if you're Duke, you can't fall that far behind yourself, so it's just a lot of great basketball left to be played. As Georgia Tech falls back now, they're in their 1 3 1, given wrecking. <laughs> Coach Cape was man-to-man -man played it. He just drew up in the timeout. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be ready for that against Josh Pastner. <laughs> Burton drives to the cup for two. Jamarius Burton's up to 10. He and Subandi have combined for 24. And traveling called on Jalen Moore, so a costly Georgia Tech turnover. Burton's getting to his spots and scoring a little bit of you know, too easy of a clip right now. And just driving the ball, getting again, he's so physical. I think he, he's telling the refs, hey. Telling Jamie Lucky there, like, hey man, you missed one. He's starting to feel it a little bit and wants the ball in his hands a little bit more. He's got 10 points, two assists, all without a turnover. Pitt for 18 minutes. They have turned it over one time. Yeah. They don't have to force anything. They can put the balls in the hands of their best of their offensive guys and attack your weakest defender. Sabandi missed it in close, and now Smith speeds ahead of the pack. Pulls up into contact. Great defense by Burton. Howard kept it alive, and Sturdivant knocks it down. That's the third time tonight, this afternoon, that Franklin has just, I mean, that Howard's just got his hands on the ball and just kicked it out to a teammate. I mean, he's done it. They got 12 second chance points here in this first half, and he's just been all, I mean, his impact on this game has been amazing. Elliott with the baseline cut, missed it. Federico follows for two. Not for Federico. Federico can do to get himself in this game, too, with all this penetration from those guards. Franklin comes over to help. Rodney Howard misses, and the rebound to Elliott. Inside the final minute of this first half with Pitt leading by two. Coming up, we will get you to the studio. Kelsey Riggs has a full house for the start of a long day with a halftime report. Burton swirls one out. Smith, his seventh rebound of the half. Nobody stops the ball. Coleman Hoist can't hit another. Smith, another offensive rebound. That's eight for the Jackets. A lot of ball watching there on Pitt. I don't know if guys are getting fatigued. You see JB standing there with his hands on his knees. Burton here at the top. Played a lot of minutes. With Cummings in foul trouble. Sturdivant off the bounce. Got a switch from Federico. Sturdivant off the mark. Federico the rebound. Pitt leading by two. Can get the last shot. Henson off the bounce with a scoop to the cup. Great drive and finish there. Knowing the time and clock and situation there. 
Henson went straight up the floor, scored, and then straight into the locker room. <laughs> Pitt's got the four-point lead on George Tech. We go to the studio with Luke, Joel, and Booze. Here's Kelsey Riggs. Got the crew. Not go up. And right now, both teams are shooting the ball at a high level. They're not turning it over. We've got a well-played game here so far. And feels like Georgia Tech's in control, but Pitt has the lead. And we'll see how the things shake out here in the second half. Pitt tied for third in the ACC, four and two, trying to get back on track after those close losses against Clemson and Duke. Georgia Tech looking for its second ACC win off the heartbreaker Tuesday. Off the Tech turnover, it's Hinson barreling to the cup. And boy, he is fiery as ever. <laughs> he came out shooting it quick early, shooting it quick and often early, and Coach Cape will set him down on the bench a little bit, so he comes out making the play on the defensive end. Had a bucket going into halftime and one out of halftime for a guy with about as good a personality as you're going to find in this conference, Blake Henson. Amazing story. Coleman hit three of them in the first half. Comes up empty there. And the other ones are coming in the first half. He got shots at the flow of the offense. That one, you could tell, it was a little bit predetermined that he was going to shoot it when he caught it. In a groove right now, but sometimes when you're in a groove, just let it come to you. They're going to find you. The ball will find you. And that time I thought Debo kind of forced that shot and shot an air ball, but you got to keep shooting. And a quick hook for Rodney Howard from Josh Passner after Howard had the turnover on the first possession for Georgia Tech out of halftime. I was surprised to see him pull him so early because I think Rodney Howard has just done a great job of keeping getting his hands on balls and playing with a level of physicality. But I'm sure he won't be there too long. Kelly fires a pass to Franklin. Back out Terry. Swirls it out. Rebound hits him. Bullet pass there, great skip pass. We've learned anything this year watching Miles Kelly. You have to be ready when he is firing <laughs> a one arm pass. Burton could muscle his way up for two, and it belongs to Georgia Tech. Debo's a physical guy, and Debo just bounced off of him. I mean, Burton is just so strong and powerful. You said this in the first half. You, you would put a lot of signs on him. Would I you would put, put, like, Franklin I on him? I would put my biggest wing on him. And Debo's the right guy to guard him. He has the size and physicality I think that's needed. Everyone else, I just think he can play bully ball against. Elliott's up on uh, Kelly. Kelly driving into Federico and draws a foul that upsets the pit coaching staff. I can see why Jeff's a little bit upset with that. I thought Kelly was driving in no man's land. And Federico Federico did a great job just coming over. A little contact there. And lip read with us hanging out in the background. Well, we don't need to lip read. We can just listen to the bench right now. Yeah. Jeff, we hear everything Jeff yelling. Foul is on the floor. It is on the floor. Jeff got his wish on that one. Coleman's got to get it in. He does to Jalen Moore. You like this vantage point here at Georgia Tech? Your second time here this year? No complaints. Get to no hang out on the visiting bench. You know it well. <laughs> oh, good tip on the follow from Javon Franklin. Another offensive rebound there again. The pit guard's got to keep the ball in front because when Federico Federico comes over to help, the big man of Georgia Tech gets a free run at the rim, and somebody's got to put a body on the box him out. Federico spinning into Coleman, draws a foul. And Debo Coleman now is tagged with three fouls. Federico comes over, no box out there, just goes right over top of him. And he's, he has size, but he's not a physical guy. So he's got a box out, three activity by Franklin. There's a quick jump. Plays a lot bigger than his 6'7 size. I mean, he plays like he's 6'9, 6'10. Pastor said if he was that big, I don't know if I would have been able to get him in. <laughs> Get him here. Uh, Federico, Federico at the line. It got us thinking, of course, who's on the all-name team. And Federico, Federico, of course, is on it. Who else? We got, I think the best name in the conference is Leaky Black. I mean, you voted for quitting post. I thought, you know, we could have maybe changed the name or two, put it in there, but I'm all right. You know, we, we, we'll go with that. I think the Armani Mighty might have been a good yeah, one to put there. I think I, I like that name. <laughs> you stumped for Leaky Black. I did. I so did. no statute of limitations on that. It, it's yeah. so good as ever. Yeah. I mean, Leaky Black has the best name in the conference. Kick to the corner. And more. Too strong. Rebound Elliott. 
pitch content on a lot when they want to see Jordan Tech make those shots again. I don't think they trust that Jordan Tech can consistently make those shots like they did in the first half. First points for Nelly Cummings, who only played seven minutes in the first half with his two fouls. And now the lead's at seven for Pitt. Now, this is the thing with Jordan Tech. It relies on so much on their execution because they don't have a guy they can just give the ball to to say, hey, they're in the middle of a run, go get me a bucket. It needs to be Miles Kelly. Well, he hasn't had a touch. Instead, Moore forced into a tough one. And now Pitt in total control with the momentum out of halftime. Cummings had played much. There's so many different ways this Pitt team attacks you. They're just telling the team, move the ball. Let, let the match, let the ball dictate who attacks. Cummings, Hoist, and hits. Five in a row for Nelly Cummings. Timeout, Georgia Tech. The lead is 10 for the Panthers on the road. How they have so many different ways to yeah. beat you, and a guy like Cummings can get going. And Jeff Cable was saying it on that possession, just, just move the basketball. Yeah, just move it and let the ball dictate the matchup. They got so many guys that can make plays. The ball doesn't need to stick so the defense can't load up. The thing I wonder when I look at Pitt is how in the world did they start one and three? And then won 10 of their next 11. <laughs> yeah, I mean, better late to figure it out. They're just doing a great job. Look at it. They're just moving their feet, keeping the ball in front, communicating, switching. They forced Davon Smith into a very difficult floater. And now Burton at the controls. Dangerous moment right now in the game for, uh, for Georgia Tech here. The lead at 10, as large as it has been. Burton short, Howard his sixth rebound. Burton's upset with himself because he had Frank Howard, Big Howard on, uh, on him and just decided to settle for a jump shot there. He could have drove it. Coleman misfires from long range. He's already hoisted eight three-point attempts here. Three of eight from long range. I don't know why I want to call Franklin Howard. Yeah, Howard what are Franklin. you doing? I, I, I don't know. Frank don't Howard? Know. That, that's who you're thinking. Yeah. <laughs> Rodney Howard. Here, I'll, I'll show you my notes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I can copy well. Let me look over this. <laughs> it's an optimist. And it's cleared by Sturdivant. Terry slicing and bouncing. Got it back somehow. And Hinson secures it. They say he was out of bounds on the baseline, so it does stay with Georgia Tech on the other side. We will study our names and numbers when we come back. <laughs> what What's you gonna get when you show up at a Josh Pastner? It's so good. He never disappoints. Uh, by the way, one of his New Year's resolutions in 2023 is not slam the scorer's table in frustration. That will frustrate him. Yeah, it turn over on the baseline inbound. that today. Yeah. This team has not come out and answered the bell so far in this second half. It wasn't for that tip in by Javon Franklin here early in the half. They got to weather this storm here and try to get back in this game. Don't let it get away from him. Post entry to Henson and a good block by Rodney Howard helping. I think Rodney Howard's had a heck of a game. His yeah. activity on the defensive end has just been great. Getting his hands on balls. There's another one. Another rebound for Howard. Had a stop. Yeah, I, I think he's been, he's been outstanding so far in this game. 4.7 rebounds for the six foot 11 big from Ypsilanti, Michigan. Sabandi on a strong take. He has been excellent. 16 for Nike Sabandi. Mikey has been a bucket here. Kelly drills one. He's the guy. He's the guy we talked about. He can get going. He can fill it up in a hurry. Didn't get a lot of shot attempts early on. Didn't see the basket early. Credit to Pitt defense. But again, if he gets going, Jordan Tech will definitely get right back in this game. Just the second bucket for Miles Kelly on an average of better than 14 a game. Cummings can't respond. Burton the offensive rebound. Sabandi. And a rebound to Davon Smith. Good pass, good play, and good unselfish basketball and good shot. Maxwell faced up on Hinson, and now Kelly driving on Cummings. 
Federico went straight up defensively and forces the turnover. Great job. He's allowed to go vertical. Kelly initiated the contact. And no call there. Just great defense. Good Pig on the Federico, offense. Been, Federico. Yeah. Pitt's been settling a little bit on the jump shots here. Last basket was attacking the rim. Let's see if they get back to attacking the rim here. Tristan Maxwell is talking with Blake Hinson as they are barking back and forth at one another. <laughs> Nothing wrong with a little trash talking. Well, Burton didn't settle there. The lead back at nine for Pitt. Not at all. I don't know if Tristan Maxwell wants to talk trash to Hinton. I mean, Hinton, he's a... I, my rule on talking trash is you never talk trash to a guy that gets to shoot the ball more than you do. <laughs> That's a great rule. That's just the way it is. Maxwell took a wild shot. Start of it, kicks for Maxwell. He hits. Talk your talk, Maxwell. Talk your talk, Tristan. Let him know. So you can back there. He let him know. Let him know. <laughs> Tristan Henson, letting him know. Yeah, Henson's not giving it back either. Tristan Maxwell is still looking at him. Hey, he let him know. He get that from his daddy. <laughs> and now chirping at the bench too with Greg Elliott. He learned that one from the best. <laughs> this is a great drive and kick. And it's great when you can talk trash first and then back it up. He letting the pit, the, the pit bench know. And Josh Pastner didn't like it. Josh Pastner just yanked him after hitting a three. Hey. He's a better man than me. I love it. Henson comes up short. Smith, another rebound. He's got 10 of them at six foot one. Smith off the bounce. Hangs and hits. He's so difficult to handle when he comes at you with a full head of steam. His size, his speed, his athleticism, getting in there, plays a lot bigger than he is. Davon Smith soaring for rebounds at one end and a chance at a three-point play when we come back to Atlanta. On an urgent fans... Davon Smith has played very well. This is a guy who was really sick yesterday and didn't practice at all yesterday for Georgia Tech. Yeah, he hadn't done much the last two days. And just comes out tonight, just playing so within himself. And activity levels off the charts. As he nine points and ten rebounds. He's well on his way to having a double double tonight this afternoon. Henson hands it off for Nelly Cummings. Now Sabandi has been the top scorer for Pitt with 16. Smith trying to stick with him. Back out Cummings. Got to get it up, and Cummings did not. It's a shot clock violation forced by Georgia Tech. Great defense there by Georgia Tech forcing a shot clock violation. Thought Henson had enough time to catch and shoot. Once he put it down, he was just, he was up against it. Where's your level of confidence for Georgia Tech going to someone for a bucket? Who are you trying to get the ball to? Well, that's the question that you have with them right now. You know, Debo's shot the ball well, but the problem is that it's the way that they have to score. There's not many guys on their roster. I think Smith is maybe, Davon Smith might be the best guy to just get the ball to and let him make a play off the bounce. That's not the other guy's strength. It's Kelly here, ran it right up into Federico, who earns possession for Pitt. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's not Miles' strength. When they need to play to break down, I think it needs to be Davon. Davon needs to be that guy. You know, at that point, you're in deep, just pass it out. Federico has done a great job just holding his ground, staying vertical. He's got three blocks. He had just come back in for that possession defensively, replacing Guillermo Diaz-Graham. Burton through the contact, and he's got a chance to stamp a three-point play. What he did on that drive was so great. Turns the corner, but he cuts off the angle to avoid. Watch him here, leans inside, initiates the contact with Rodney Howard, and takes the angle away from him so he can't block the shot. And that's what you want to do to a shot blocker. And Burton says, hey, you want to talk? I'll talk with the best of them, and he could definitely back it up. So. What a leader this guy has been for Pitt. Not just this year, but last year yeah, as well. He has been. 
Jeff just raves about him. Jeff Capel raves about him and the leadership that he's shown in his team. And with so much is going on about him. I mean, when this team started the year, there wasn't a lot. This team was picked 14th in the ACC to start the year, and there wasn't a lot of expectation. And you know, there's no doubt in my mind this team will finish in the top half of the league, and if not the top four or five teams. Very early, but right now Joe Lenardi does have them, and rightly so. Oh, deservingly so. As a tournament team. Good pass from Maxwell underneath to Howard. So Josh Pastner goes back to Tristan Maxwell, trusting him. And Maxwell's still going to talk his talk. A glance over at the pit bench as we take a quick timeout. We're back at 30 to Atlanta. He wasn't nobody you was going to talk crazy to. You, you talk to Vernon Maxwell, you better have been prepared. As Joe Detect comes out down there in their 1 3 1, change of defenses again. Five point margin. Pitt leads midway through the second half. Cummings. Boy, he is so balanced on his mid range jump shots. Shooting mid range jumpers in Midtown. He's doing it well. I mean, he, he looks so comfortable. He's getting to his spots. He's, he's balanced. Looks like his, his goal is going in every time he leaves his hand. Seven since halftime in these 10 minutes for Nellie Cummings, the Colgate transfer. Start of it. Fighting for space on Burton. Nearly turned it over. Howard bails him out. Start of it from the free throw line. Can't hit. They get in trouble when they don't get that ball in the high post, the pinch post, and start running their actions. There's really only one guy, I think. It's just Dav Davon Smith is the guy that they can just do something off the bounce. I don't know if the other guys are a playmaker's doing it the way Davon Smith is. Miles Kelly's on the bench right now after he has struggled to find his footing here throughout this game. Shot clock is winding down. It's Cummings again. Court Howard on the Mitch Max there. There's nothing they can do. You can hear the pit, pit bench yelling, telling them to swing the ball, reverse, take advantage of that of the switching that Georgia Tech is doing, and easy drive and finish there at the rim. Maxwell Hello. got it to go, <laughs> and the foul. Tell him. Talk to him, try to talk to him. He's gonna wheel his team back in this game, Mike. He's gonna look at him. He's driving. Hey, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Look at just throw it up off the glass and one. Just tell him I called it. I tell him I practiced that shot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on, even he's laughing. Hey, 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 I practice that. It's two in the book. It's a field goal in the bucket in the book. That's the way, that's what you tell him. Junior can't stamp it. He's playing yeah. in only his 19th career game. He's got there all sorts yeah, of different has. issues he in has. his three years. But he's an excellent shooter, you know, and I think he's shown that, and I think that's one of the reasons why Josh Pastner is putting him in the game right now. He knows his team is shooting the ball well, but that's not what they do, and they're going to need him to come in and make shots and to make them that much better. Burton straight on late shot clock again. Gets by Smith, goes at Howard and rolled off. Pitt's putting a lot of pressure on the rim, and they've done, they've outscored Georgia Tech in the paint. That's what opens up their three point shot is attacking the rim. Smith trying to create. Savandi runs down the rebound. Federico sets the screen for Cummings. He's just trying to set that ball screen and just get the ball moving. Let the ball move, get body movement, ball movement. Whenever you get the ball in this guy's hands, good things usually happen, but not that time. Offensive foul forced by Lance Terry. Jeff Capel and Pitt on the road. They lead by seven against Georgia Tech. It's both to go. Pitt on the road. You heard the crew at halftime in the studio talking about just how hard it is to win on the road in the ACC. It's not a cliche. You've lived no, it before. No, it's not. Everyone in that studio knows how difficult it is. And only thing I'm gonna say about the studio is I gotta talk to Booz, man, see if he's gotten in better shape. I mean, he walked up the <laughs> he walked up them stairs, man, and and and, <laughs> and indoor camera, and he was out of breath, man. So I gotta get on him about that. I gotta check on him, see if he got any New Year's resolutions right now. Up to the crow's nest. Oh yeah, he had to come up top, man. We interviewed him at halftime, and he was gassed. I thought it was I had to check on him a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Just picking on you, booze. Oh, he's going to fire back. <laughs> he's got a microphone, too. 
I'm sure he'll come back. Seven point margin. Seven and a half to go. Second half. And this is the dangerous part for Joe to take. Like, there's not one guy that just they rely so much on execution. Like that handoff you wanted to be at the elbow. Maxwell, really tough shot. Smith bats it out. And Georgia Tech a fresh 20. Terry on Hinson. No. Following his own miss. Squirts out toward Burton, who got bumped by Coleman. Elliott kicks for Sabandi. Dropped it down for Henson, who draws a foul on Davon Smith, who disagrees. Joe to take that possession. Got an active possession on the last time. Got another possession. Didn't get back. Didn't match up. And Davon Smith had to commit the foul there. They, were, they just never matched up defensively. Great drive by Nike Sabandi in finding him. He has been excellent creating. It he puts Hansen at the line. 16 and 6 a game for the native of Deltona, Florida, who, remember, wasn't playing last year. Yeah. Stepped away from the team at Iowa State before the season started. Blake said he played a lot of pickup at LA Fitness in Florida. And to get the competition level up, he'd be running his mouth to get a little fire in that gym. Yeah, he is. Coach Cape has found a gem in him. I mean, he's a tenth of a point from leading this team in scoring. We talk about J.B. Burton, but there's only a tenth of a point difference between he and Blake Henson. Where does Georgia Tech go to create offense? It's in the hands of Davon Smith with the shot clock winding down. Sabandi on Smith. They force a turnover. Elliott goes diving. And we've got a held ball with the arrow pointing to Pitt. Great job by Elliott getting on the floor there. Sitting in gaps. Great job diving on the floor there. Debo gets down dirty with him and ties him up. He's used to doing that coming from a Marcus Smart. No defensive mentality the way they get after it. On a defensive end as well, so. That's nothing new to him. Here with the ball ahead by eight. More than six left, second half on the road at Georgia Tech. Start of our triple header here on ACC Network. Sabandi lost it, Federico found it, had it pop out on him. Rebound Terry. Passionate didn't tell Cable not to slap the board, I guess. That's, <laughs> I know he talked about it, but. <laughs> it's going on at the Georgia Tech end of things. Yeah, Jeff's a Cable's a little bit upset. Coleman couldn't finish that basket there. Had a great look. Now Smith with a good look, and that was much needed for Georgia Tech. Yes. It's a five-point game. I mean, he's a capable guy doing it off the bounce. They got to they rely on half-court execution. And when plays break down, he's the one guy I think they can give the ball to to make him a play. And that, that time, he stepped up and knocked down a three. See the drought without a made bucket for Pitt. Swelling. Henson short, Kelly the rebound, and Georgia Tech can trim it to one possession. Howard has had a good game for the Jackets, backs it out for Coleman, and returns it. Coleman kicks. Smith, no. Rebound, Sabandi. Jeff Capel does not take a timeout. Now he does. Yeah, he does. His they were discussing him with their him. staff. Yeah, they reminded him, and it was a big time to take a, take a timeout there. Under five to go. The lead is five for Pitt on the road. The Little John, then 7 o'clock Eastern in Central New York, Notre Dame at Syracuse, and this to start it all has been a good one in Atlanta. Now we've had a good game today. It hasn't been sloppy. Both teams have competed, played hard. Really good basketball game. Nike Sabandi nearly got the roll, deadened off the back iron, and then a foul on the rebounding action by Federico Federico. 
great box, box out there by Miles. Kelly, not shooting the ball great, but again, those are the little things you can do to help your team out. A lot of time left to put your imprint on this. He'll get a chance to make a play here down the stretch, get his team back in this game. Good hands by Burton. They were looking for the dribble handoff with Kelly. Smith trying to navigate the pick and roll. Instead gives it off for Coleman. Coleman drives on Henson. A lot of contact and an offensive foul on Debo Coleman. And now he's got four. Great job by Henson. Just getting through the dribble handoff. Getting back in front of the ball. Just moving his feet. Feels the bump there. It's a great job. Contact. Jamie Lucky on the call. Coleman stays in. Keep an eye on that 406 mark. He picks up his fourth. Nelly Cummings comes back in and replaces Greg Elliott for a pit team searching for some offense. Well, you need uh, Debo to stay out there even with four foul. The pit, you want to put the ball in this guy's hands. Burton had a great spin, missed it in close. Rebound cleared by Howard. You can live with that good move. Just didn't finish it. Now, if you enjoy the tech, where do you go here now? You want to catch the ball, you want to put the ball in Howard's hand here. He catches in a good spot. Federico's done a great job of Kim coming to the three-point line, making it, make, making it a difficult catch. Did that again there on Smith, who turned the corner. Federico stood him up. Sabandi pushes on the drive. Sabandi, oh, wow. the finish and the foul. Sabandi in his bag with the layup package there. Can tell you how difficult a finishing that is. Sabandi comes in with the year roll step and his best Kyrie Irving impersonation, putting Pitt up seven. Higher than this, I mean, they're moving the ball, they're attacking match mismatches, and he's a confident guy with his ability to defend. He's going to be on the floor, and he's going to find opportunities, and he's just taking advantage of it and as confidently as he should be. Again, we go back to what assistant coach Jason Capel told us pregame that he has changed games for Pitt. Yes. Not just defensively and rebounding and with the energy there, but on that side of the floor with his scoring as well. Well, you think about it, where would this team be tonight without him? I mean, Joe Tech has not played poorly. He's just been really good like that on the defensive end. Howard, hook, no. Now we're at the guts of the game right now for Joe Tech. You got to get out of your zone. Yeah, they're coming out to play a little bit man to man. And this is where it get dangerous with Pitt because they get the Pitt's pick their matchup of who they want to attack and who they want to put in a ball screen action with this guard play. They go back to Cummings. Shot clock at five. Start of it is on Cummings. Off the ball screen. Nelly Cummings down the lane off the glass. It's a great drive there. We talked about it all night long with his mid-range. He's just gotten to his spots. Kelly, no rebound. There's a foul on Federico. Federico battling there with Rodney Howard. I think Howard's played well tonight. Again, he's been inside. He's, he's had a physical presence on him. We talked about it a bunch tonight. And this is a foul here that's just rewarding his effort. He's going to the glass, made an effort. He's got his hands on a lot of balls. You know, deflecting them out to his shooters and grabbing offensive rebounds. Had scored a lot of points tonight, but he's rebounded the ball. He has 10 rebounds and four offensive rebounds. And he's got his hands in deflections on more. He dials in his form ahead of the one and one. And he misses on the first. Only 56% for his career. Yeah. And how about this? Georgia Tech for the game at the free throw line. 0 for 3. Yeah, it's always tough when you miss the front end on one and one as well. It just becomes into possession. You at least when you're not a great free throw shooter, you want to make one. It's always tough, and I think as a guard, I, you try to you want them to get to the free throw line. And it's a great shot, great move, great poise. He's their closer, and he's he's like we said before, he's playing like an All ACC guy, and we're seeing nothing different from that tonight. Boy, they have had closing shots from Sabandi, from Cummings, and now from Jamarius Burton, and the lead is a dozen inside the final 90 seconds of this second half. Kelly backs it out for Smith off the shot. Kansas three. Now they're 
setting up the full court pressure here. Pitt does have two timeouts. They break the pressure into the hands of Burton. And Lance Terry commits the foul along the sideline. That is the seventh on Georgia Tech. So the one and one coming for an excellent free throw shooter in Jamarius Burton. Yeah, it's not the position you want to be in again. Trying to press them with four guards on the floor. They all handle the ball. They all initiate offense. And that's difficult to do for anyone in that point in the game. And they get to put their best free throw, put the ball in their best free throw shooter's hands and try to not game isn't over yet, but just try to close the game and, and, and make free throws. It's it's his election of free throw shooter, shooting in the 80, 80 percentile. And you just think about the last possession down there. You missed the front end of a one and one, and then they come down and they're making their free throws. It's just one of those little detailed things that Coach Cable was talking about that they needed to start shoring up if they wanted to get back to winning ACC games and getting their third road win. There's not a lot of teams in the ACC, if any, with three ACC road wins. Burton makes both. Lead at 11 with 109 left here in the second half and trying to get another ACC road win yeah. and trying to get to 5-2 and two in league play. Yeah. Georgia Tech's got to go quick. They're not built to play that way, but now they're running out of time, and you got to make quick decisions and get the basket quick. You don't have time to keep running offense. Terry, smooth shot, 52 seconds left, down to nine. Should be trying to get a five-second count here. Yeah, they're going to pull it back out and put it in their ball handles and free throws. Georgia make Tech free fouls yeah. Nike Sabandi with 44 seconds left. So uh, let's spin it forward with Pitt. They go to Louisville on Wednesday here on ACC Network. Louisville fell again today at the hands of North Carolina at the Yum Center. And then Pitt back home next Saturday, also on ACC Network, against Florida State. They're a good team. I mean, I think they've shown that. I mean, you, you just thought when you looked at how they started the year going one and three, you just thought like, okay, this isn't going to work well. But I think, again, the identity shift. At that time, you probably, you probably were thinking, hey, we're going to have John Hughley, and how much was he going to play a big part of what they were doing? And they, I think they found their identity, and they're going to be a tough out. I mean, these guys can score. They got multiple playmakers, and not all of them played great tonight, but enough for them to possibly come out of here with a win. Coleman hits from long range back down to nine with 36 seconds to go here in regulation. It's Coleman's first basket in the second half. After he had been cooking yeah, early had, on. Had 11 early in the first half, and that's his first basket here in the second half. And long two for Debo Coleman again. Check out the standings. Big one coming up. Less than 10 minutes away from Duke at Clemson. It's a big one. What should we expect in that game between the Blue Devils and the Tigers, who you see? 6-0, still perfect. Right. Hunter Tyson's been awesome. Hunter Tyson's playing like player of the year candidate right now. P.J. Hall, we know what's good. Their front line is so good and so, so experienced. And they're set-oriented, but the difference in this team this year is Chase Hunter is a guy that when the shot clock breaks down, they can give him the ball and he can go make a bucket. And I don't know if they've had the combination of all those things together. So this is not a fluke. I know that some are going to say, hey, it's the scheduling. Uh, we talked to Jeff Capel about it yesterday at, at, at practice, and he said it's the best team he's faced, that they faced so far. And, you know, this is a team that played Virginia and Carolina and NC State and Duke. And he says that he believes Clemson is the best team. And I think they're for real. I think they got all the parts. You know Brad Brunel's teams are going to defend. They're tough. They're all those things. They're well coached, and they're going to be a tough out. I mean, if they, they win this game today, they're, they're, they're clear two of everyone else for sure. And uh, I, I think it's going to be tough to catch them. I mean, there, there's a lot of basketball left to play. By no stretch of imagination, my saying they're done. I think Virginia's going to have something to say about it, some other teams. But they have the ability to score. And now they got a guard that they can put the ball in his hands. And I think it makes him a serious contender in this league. Uh, he is from Atlanta. And Chase Hunter is excellent as well. And you said Hunter Tyson. Uh, he's playing as good as anybody in this league. And, and if you had to vote today, he Maybe he would be a conference player. I think of the he year. gets it. I think if you would have vote right now today, I mean, we talked about all that. He's definitely all ACC right now. Again, I know it's a ton of play, but he's been surprised. And he's been a player of the year guy. I mean, I, you know, he and Armando Baycott, who I was shocked to see play today when he got injured. Only played one minute last game, and then he comes back today and he plays. And Hanson gets the rebound after he missed on the front end with 30 seconds left. 
They've been hurting the glass tonight. It's good for them to try to sneak in and get them an offensive rebound themselves. Armando Baycott, by the way, doing Armando Baycott things. Oh, it's just it's a double double. I don't even need to know the stats. I know he had a double double. But he did. Of course he did. 16 rebounds. Of course. I don't even count until he gets to 10. Like for me, it's like he got six because I know he. Got He's going to fall on the court and trip and get 10 rebounds. Clockwork. Yeah, just count it. He's a double-double. Just book it. He walks out there now. Carolina victorious today, like we said, at Louisville. Lead is 11 for Pitt inside the final 30 seconds. Again, we will get you at top of the hour to Little John Coliseum. Howard on the hook, no. Hints in the rebound, secures it for Pitt. And the Panthers, they bounce back, and they get another ACC road win. Yeah. They take down Georgia Tech here in Atlanta. Just a great job by Pitt coming in, just doing what they've been doing all year. Coach Capel told us there was no panic. This team was cool, calm, collected. They were going to get back to details of doing the little things and just finishing possessions. And we saw some at the night. They know they're going to give up some offensive rebounds. They're not the biggest team in the league. They made plays when it counted, and their guard play, the depth of this guard play is as good as any team in the ACC. Four more hours of hoops still to come. Duke Clemson coming up in five minutes.